All right, here we are. Good afternoon. And it is good to see your faces again today. Really enjoy being able to see you guys smile and watch you learn. And I'm really excited and pumped up today, particularly as you walked in, right? You were each assigned a resume document. You picked it up on your way in and you're sitting down now. So we're gonna use those resumes. Don't, don't show them to your neighbor. Don't talk about them quite yet, but take a few seconds to look it over, evaluate the information that's on it, get acquainted with it because I'm gonna pass out <clears throat> a job card. And on this job card, it has a description of a job that a, jobs, a, job, a company would be looking for an employee to fulfill that position. And you're gonna pair up with a person next to you or somebody you wanna partner with and you're going to play the role of the applicant and the interviewer. So you're going to be the boss and you'll be the person looking to be the employee. And you're gonna use the resume that you were given when you're the employee in the interview. You're gonna answer the questions that the employer who has the job card is asking you based on your resume that you've got. So this might be a little challenging for some of you because not every resume out there is easy to navigate, easy to understand. But for a couple of you, you'll probably have a pretty good resume to, to go off of and it'll be a pretty simple process. So let's take a few minutes. I'm gonna pass these out and then we'll come back and uh, talk, about our, talk about the interaction and get the discussion going. This is where time fast forwards for about six minutes. And we're all giggling now. There we go. Hey, so that was a fun interaction. Glad to hear you guys getting involved, being actively engaged in an in, in a, uh, environment of job seeking and job giving, right? Who had a good time doing that? Was that, was that a fun activity? All right, good. It looked like you guys all had fun. It got a little ruckus there for a bit, but uh, fortunately we all calmed down. So based on the 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 job seeking portion right you're applying what what are some things that if you don't have a resume let's say you go to get a job who here has, has raise your hand if you've actually applied for a job i see a few people out there emmett i know you've applied for a job but i don't see your hand up okay what's a what is it? Is it a stressful process? Is it a process that you have to think about a whole lot? Did anybody have a fun time doing it? All right, you guys are real. No, we got a no. We got a laugh in the back. Okay, so a good resume can really alleviate alleviate a lot of stress, a, a lot of uh, questions that you have on job seeking. So let's talk about some of the resumes that you guys had to use when answering questions from your partner, who was your potential boss. Um, first of all, what does a resume allow the job seeker to do? Isabella? Um, it's tailored to a specific job position. It's, yours was tailored to a specific job position? That's great. What, what does it allow you to do as a job seeker that you might not have the ability to do in the job application? Um, well, they let you put more about yourself that you may not be able to put on a job application. Perfect. Because a job application is who are you, what's your address, where's your you know, work experience, and some other things. But a resume lets you do a little bit more. Good. So did any of you receive a poor style resume? In your opinion, Scarlett, your hand shot up immediately. What, what makes you think yours is an unprofessional or poor resume? Um, too much, there's too much going on and, it was, and it's not tailored to a specific position or company. Okay. And it had like pictures and Font size was too large in some places, and then other areas it was too small. Okay. Anything else? There was missing information. Missing information, wow. 
Okay. All right. And what made you feel like yours was a professional one, Isabella? Um, well, I did a specific job position. Tailored to the specific job position applying for. Okay. Anything else? Um, it was very organized and detailed and also easy to navigate. Uh, organized, detailed, and easy to navigate. Those are all excellent attributes of a resume. That helps the employer look through information efficiently to decide whether or not they want to pursue this applicant with a follow-up call. Good. Okay, so let's elaborate on some of the things that made that can make poor resumes. What are some other things that you guys think might make for a poor resume? Yes, Scarlett. There, well, the pictures. Oh, pictures, yeah. You... And there were way too many hobbies and personal interests, and it had literal stories in it. Literal stories? Well, I mean, I guess a literal story is better than a non-literal story. Yeah. You want to be, you want to tell the truth in your resume. So, I mean, so, but you don't want to do stories, for sure. Mm -hmm. There's another part to resumes. You can, you can include cover letters or at the company's request, if they ask you for hobbies or ask you for personal interests, you can describe yourself in a letter. But the resume is typically an informative document for em employers to review applicants efficiently and quickly. So let's dive into some of the major, major topics that are involved with resumes excuse me major elements involved with resumes i've got them on the board if you haven't read them already and written them down in your notes this is a good time to do it so the first element is professionalism professionalism means you're you're not including stories you don't have like whimsical fonts or uh, elaborate descriptions of 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 things you, yeah pictures very rarely come up if you've got a logo because you work for some for some your own business and you want to include that in your resume then that may be appropriate but otherwise it should be a clean looking document very professional with clear communication i'd say clear communication and concise would be in the same tier they kind of are the same thing but they can be different you want to clearly communicate what you have as your work experience and your skill sets and your education. If you get into things and it starts to get muddled, then people are going to get confused and not want to look at your resume any longer. Uh, <laughs> errors. You can't have errors. You need to be grammatically correct and have the right structure. So stay consistent with your spacing, stay consistent with your, your font sizes, your paragraphs, use headings, use bulleted lists efficiently and um, make it look really really clean so then when you have all of those elements involved your paper as you as you look at the i just had scarlet pass around the it's a for robert e mcalerney some guy yes he's got a resume prepared and uh, we're using it as an example we also have one from a Michael Merkelbach, and we're going to use both of these as quality resumes. Okay, so let's first look at Michael's. <clears throat> Everybody there? Okay. Does this seem like it contains all of the major elements that I just described in a resume? Professionalism, communication is clear and concise. He's grammatically correct with no errors and it's structured. It appears to all be in order, correct? He's got everything detailed out in sections. Education is in one section. He's got experience in another section. And then based off that, it's all, it's all going in sequential order with his name at the top. There's no fluff. There's no fat. There's no Nothing that doesn't need to be on this isn't on it. This is tailored for, oh, probably a, if you read it, a, uh, a law firm. So he'd walk in, shake hands, I need to talk to the hiring director, hand them this, and they would interview him and hire him on the spot because he's got an amazing resume, right? 
If only it were that easy. There's a lot of other things you have to do to set yourself apart. But a resume is an important element to do it. Um, just a moment. <clears throat> so the next, let's look at the Robert McAlerney resume, the single page. Okay, same thing. Got a, a header with a name, information, personal information, education is outlined, work experience is outlined, and references is outlined. Sometimes companies don't necessarily need references if they know you. A lot of places ask for references on referral, and um, you can provide them separately. Now, this is a single page version of the Robert E. McAlerney resume. There's a two page version here that has been tailored to a uh, specific role. We'll get to that in just a moment after I dive into the topics that we just went through briefly talking about the structures. Yes, that's, yep, that's it. We'll go over that one in just a second. So now diving into the major topics included in a resume, personal information. It's got to be yours, right? You can't be doing it for a made up person. That's not, that's not how it works. And then you got to have the objectives of the resume preparer. So you need to, you need to let the employer know why you're pursuing this position. Why do you want to be a lawyer at this law firm? Or why do you want to be a teacher at this school? Right? So that gives them the insight as to what your thoughts are for applying for this position. What your education is. Are you qualified for it? Do you show the, the, um, the fortitude and the commitment to pursue your education? Is that a value for you? A lot of companies really put a lot of, a lot of weight into education. Your work experience, any volunteer work that you have. I know some of you probably don't have any work experience and that's the hardest part, entering the job pool when you're in high school or just out of high school is getting that work experience, that oh so valuable work experience. That's why I put volunteer work experience as well because as a high schooler, and we all rose, we all raised our hands for applying jobs if you had, and if you have a job, um, you've got a work experience. But if you don't, great way to get experience is through volunteer work, whether that's at the Humane Society, at a food shelter, at a church, any places. If you need help finding somewhere to volunteer, come and talk to me after class. I'd love to help get you connected uh, with, with some place locally that that could utilize utilize helping hands uh, references again these can be on a resume they don't have to be uh, you don't have to have a long list i'd say three is is a good number to stick with unless the company asks for more and then additional topics awards and honors skill sets activities and hobbies now you want to be careful when you're doing this that when you Consider the elements with clear and concise communication for activities and hobbies that you're really just striking a list. You're not diving into, yes, I like long walks in the rain under a canopy of evergreen trees. You know, you're not, you're not describing your, your love of the forest and taking forest walks. You're just saying, I love the outdoors, right? Or... You know, let's, some companies value these types of traits more than other types of traits. So it's really important to, first of all, when you're evaluating the job you're going to be applying for while using resume, it's important to elaborate on the elements that that company values along with your own values. So we'll dive into that right now with the, the two-paged Robert McAlerney resume. This is a resume that has been tailored specifically for a, well, I would say a large construction company role within a large construction company role. It's, a, it's, it's got a list of work experience that itemizes in just real par paragraphical no, what's the word? Not paragraphical, but it, it's it's listed out in 
comma form in a bulleted list and it's easy to read but it's not cumbersome it's not overly uh, overly wordy it's to the point and concise for a like a project coordinator role or a, a job site management role or a coordinator role a supervisor role in the construction industry or even in a business that that utilizes these same skill sets it's there's a lot of things that you can do to tailor your own even if you're not as experienced there's still a lot of things that you can do to tailor your resume to the job that you're applying so let's say you're applying to um, Windsor plywood Emmett what are some of the things that you could include in your resume to help the the hiring manager at Windsor plywood to set you aside and and want to seek you out to hire you construction knowledge Construction knowledge and manual labor, good. Any so, what is what would Windsor Plywood value as an employee, as an employer in an employee? In your opinion, those two things. Those two things. Anything being able, above? Being able to sell a product. So salesmanship. So you need to be able to have customer service skills. Yes. Good. Good. Okay. That's great. <clears throat> Yes, customer service. If you're applying for a retail position, customer service is an is an essential element to include in your in your application in your resume. So, <coughs> excuse me, tailoring your resume can be something as simple as saying in each element instead of just saying your work experience is manual labor, you could amplify that by saying manual labor while lifting awkward panels or long sticks of or long boards to uh <laughs> you see what i'm saying you can still get your stuff across and not have too many words but still have it specific to the job you're applying and based on the information that you guys now know if you haven't already created a resume your task the next couple of days and for the rest of the class period today is to utilize these elements and i've got a a pdf or not pdf i've got a word version of each of these or a few different types and you can actually on word itself there's you can go to search when you open a new document you can create a resume and there's a plethora of different resume types i would encourage you each to Pick like two or three different types. Write one resume and see how it works in a few different templates. See what works for you, what doesn't work for you, how you can personalize it. Keep it within the context of the major elements and major topics and include as much information about yourself that you can with these things in mind. And we'll have that due a week from today. So three of them different different templates they don't have to be drastic and you don't have to print them you can email them to me um, I want you to I want you to be able to identify and distinguish quality style resumes from poor style resumes and my goal with this is to equip you so that you can maintain and alter adjust your own high quality professional resume and then also gain some understanding about the interviewing process uh, when you're a job seeker and potentially when you are the one doing the interviewing. So in a future lesson, we will actually be utilizing your own resumes and I will have the same activity that we started the class with today with the job cards. We'll just go ahead and I'm gonna read what your resumes say and then I'm gonna create some jobs that I think would work great for each of you. And then we'll go ahead and pool those together, do the same type of activity, but we'll do it for the whole class. And we'll be able to mock interview everybody and I'll be included. I'll get to do some interviewing. I'll get to be interviewed. You guys will have some fun with me as well. So um, I hope you guys had a, a, an informative class period today. If you have any questions or if you already have one prepared, just shoot it over to me and we'll look at it right now. Um, other than that, let's let's get to work and you guys have a great rest of the day.